Today we're going to talk about things to do when visiting Paris. Let's go. That's right, guys. We're going to show you around the top attractions from Paris. We're going to show you some of the food. We're also going to show you some of the museums, show you around some of the top attractions on the outskirts of Paris. Also in the description below, there will be timestamps so you can bounce around from attraction to attraction by clicking on those links. First up, we're going to start on the outskirts of Paris in Versailles. This is called the Palace of Versailles, a former royal residence built by King Louis XIV. Nowadays, it is a well manicured garden. You can actually go inside the palace. If you intend to visit here, you need to make reservation online before you go. It is 12 miles outside of Paris to get here to Versailles, so keep that in mind. But you can actually rent a golf cart to get around. That's what I do recommend. That's what I did when I was here. It's actually a large garden area. Next up is Sacre Coeur. This is actually the Basilica of the Sacred Heart, which is what it translates to in English. Located in Montmartre, which is at the top of the hill here in Paris. Originally built in 1870, it sits 200 meters above the Seine River in Paris here. It is considered the second most popular tourist destination in all of Paris. You can also put a lock here on the fence before you go inside and then once you're inside you can see a beautiful cathedral once you step outside you have the great views overlooking paris the site in which it sits is actually traditionally associated with martyrdom of saint denis the patron saint of paris next up we're headed over to the eiffel tower a place where you can walk around they have gardens also go to the top if you would like it was built by gustav eiffel in 1887 for the 1889 World Fair. It is widely regarded as the number one tourist destination in all of Paris, as you can see and probably already know. It's also considered one of the most romantic places for couples, but people just come here in the afternoon and bathe in the sun in the area around the parks. Now we're gonna head over to Lafayette Galleries. This is one of the most popular shopping malls in all of the world. It's an interesting place because on the outside, it doesn't look like much. Until you go inside, you realize it's seven floors and they have a beautiful blue dome right in the middle. It is considered a high-end luxury department store. Next up, we're gonna actually take a river boat down the Seine River. They do have a variety of different tours. You can get the cheapest one for 15 euros or a lunch cruise for 40 euros, a dinner cruise for 50 euros. Just depends on what you guys wanna do when you're on that river boat. Or you can just do hop on, hop off, and I believe a ticket is typically included to do a river cruise, but this is the main artery for old Paris getting around. Next up, we're headed to Champs-Élysées, which is actually a main road going right here through the heart of Paris, all the way towards the Arc de Triomphe, which we will be showing you in a little bit. But this is a main area for shopping. It is 1.2 miles long and widely regarded as the most beautiful avenue in the entire world. Now we're headed right next door to the Tuileries Garden, as with most places in Paris. Everything is really centrally located, although it does take a long time to get there by foot. Tuileri Garden is actually famous because of the uprising of 1789 with King Louis and Marie Antoinette. They took refuge in the palace nearby here. In case you're wondering why it's called Tuileri, it's because of the tile factories that actually used to be located here. It is free to walk around and it's got a fountain and cherry blossoms, along with this Ferris wheel that appears to be seasonal. Next up, we're actually headed back towards the Arc de Triomphe. Now this is a key historical landmark in Paris, located at the western end of Champs-Élysées, also intersecting around about with Charles de Gaulle Avenue. Now it is important because the king put this in place to commemorate the French Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars, basically honoring the fallen. Most people nowadays, they come here to take a picture while they're hanging out. They also like to drive around the roundabout here. So just basically coming here, taking a picture under the Arc de Triomphe. People just like to walk under the actual Arc itself as well. Now we're going to check out Montmartre, which is actually the neighborhood where the Basilica of the Sacred Heart is. Also, some other activities nearby is Moulin Rouge. But yeah, this whole neighborhood right here, if you just walk around this neighborhood, you'll find it to be very relaxing, lots of cafes, and people are just always walking out around here, riding their bikes, just getting out in the nature, in the environment, really a beautiful neighborhood. So if you're looking for some place to hang out or get a hotel, I would say this area around Montmartre is going to be one of your favorite places that you will go while in Paris. Now we're on to Petit Palais which is actually one of many different palaces that we're gonna be showing you in this Things To Do, but it was under construction when I was there. It should be getting ready to be finished now, but definitely add this place to the list. It was built for the 1900 Exposition Universelle. 
but nowadays it's a museum for fine arts. One of the best ways for new people to get around Paris is going to be on a hop-on, hop-off bus. They take you around the city. Remember, traffic congestion in Paris is slow, so these buses do have to deal with that when you're on one of these. A ticket typically runs anywhere between $45 to $55. Next up is the Palais Garnier, and this here is an opera house. There are a few opera houses, and taking in a show while you're here in Paris can be something worthwhile. So do look up operas or shows while in Paris, but this one here, Palais Garnier, Opera House, right here in the heart of Paris on Avenue de la Opera. Now here we are at Luxembourg Gardens. There's also a palace here. There's a garden that you can walk around in many different directions. They've got tennis courts, they've got water fountains, they've got grassy knolls that you can just relax at. A great way to beat the hustle and bustle of the big city of Paris when you're just looking for some relaxation. This is a former royal palace, so it is significant. It's one of the most popular gardens in all of France and Europe, really, but certainly here in Paris. Also, while we're going around here, I want to remind you guys, if you check in the description below, we do have more videos from Paris and other areas around Europe, including the French Riviera, which is towards the south, towards Monaco also. We have Brussels, which is in the other direction, and some from the Netherlands. It's really easy to get around by train when you're here in Europe from Paris. And just so you know, I actually arrived on a high-speed train coming in from Geneva, Switzerland, and it took about three hours to get to Paris. That's how fast those trains go. Now with that being said, another thing to do is go to the train station and take a train to another place, whether it be inside of France or Brussels or Switzerland. So riding trains in France, very efficient. And once you're inside the Schengen visa zone, you can actually go from country to country without immigration processing. So it makes it very easy. Now we're at the world famous Moulin Rouge, very famous because of a movie, but also because it is the birthplace of the modern form of the can-can dance. This is actually a cabaret of sorts, so when you're down here, uh, do be sure to check out Moulin Rouge if you are into that kind of thing, but you'll know it because you'll see the windmill, it is red, and it has red trim all around the building. It's right next to Montmartre. In case you're wondering, the reason they use a red windmill is because in the area back in the early 1900s, they used to grind flour with these windmills, but also the reason they painted it red was because they wanted to be seen from very far away. And here we have the Notre Dame Cathedral, this here in Paris is a medieval Catholic cathedral, meaning Our Lady of Paris. Uh, it did burn down a few years ago, so it is temporarily closed. They will be opening it soon because they are rebuilding it, but right now you can actually go to the outside. If you were to be able to go on the inside, you would see a lot of old history, although I'm not sure how much of that is going to be preserved because of that fire that happened a few years ago. This is actually after the fire, what you're looking at here. You can see most of the stone structure did stay intact. It was just the wooden part that burned. And now we're actually going to talk about something really fun, which is Paris Disneyland. Fun for the whole family, especially the kids. So if you get a chance to go to Disneyland in Paris, I would say take the opportunity. It is the happiest place on earth, they say. Now we're going to highlight another neighborhood. This one is called the Latin Quarter. It is actually famous for bookshops, including landmark Shakespeare and Company. So very famous place. There's also a botanical garden in this area. It's one of the oldest districts in all of Paris. So do check this one out. And again, we're back here in the Latin Quarter. This one is called the Pantheon of Paris. It's a civic building. It was rebuilt during the 19th century, serving as a church. <laughs>
the deal, Paris is one of the best cities in the world for visiting museums. Aside from the Louvre, there's also the D'Orsay, there's the Rodin Museum, the Carnavalet, there's also the Museum of National Picasso, and so many different museums here. So do a Google search, look up the Pompadour, check out these museums while in Paris because certainly one of the top things to do. Also the National Museum, the Cluny Museum. You will notice most of it is art museums though, I will say that. Now on to looking at the art across the river, on the bridges, and the fountains. So this is something you'll want to do while you're in Paris, just observing the amount of art that went into building this city with the intricacies. Now with all that being said, this is gonna conclude this episode of Island Hopper TV from Paris. If you guys enjoy it, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel and we will see you on the next one. I will post a link to our French Riviera tour and also Monaco.